next topic noun case examine these sentences peter threw a pen the noun peter is the subject it is the answer to the question who threw a pen peter threw a pen so peter is the subject the group of words through a pen is the predicate the predicate contains the verb through so in this sentence there are two parts peter threw a pen peter is called the subject and the remaining words are called predicate what did peter throw a pen so pen is the object which peter threw the noun pen is therefore called object you ask the question what or whom to find out object in this sentence you are asking what so you are getting the answer pen so pen is the object in this sentence the horse kicked the girl in this sentence the noun horse is the subject it is the answer to the question who kicked the girl who kicked the girl the horse so the horse is the subject then the noun girl is the object why see the question it is the answer to the question whom did the horse kick the horse kicked the girl the girl is the object of the sentence nominative case when a noun or pronoun is used as the subject of a verb it is said to be in the nominative case points to find the nominative put two questions who and what before the verb objective or accusative case that is the second case is called objective or accusative case first is nominative the second is accusative the other name for accusative case is objective when a noun or pronoun is used as the object of a verb it is said to be in the objective or accusative case points to find the accusative put two questions whom or what before the verb and its subject a noun which comes after a preposition is also said to be in the accusative case as the pen is in the table here the noun table is in the accusative case because it comes after the preposition in governed by the preposition in read the following sentences kannan broke the glass here the glass is the object of the sentence the glass was broken by kannan subject it will be seen that nouns in english have the same form for the nominative and the accusative no change between the nominative and the accusative case as for as the noun is concerned the nominative generally comes before the verb and the accusative after the verb that is the main difference between the nominative and accusative case hence they are distinguished by the order of words or by the tense examine the sentences this is rama's computer rama's computer is equal to the computer belonging to rama that is rama is the owner of the computer the form of the noun rama is changed to ramas to show ownership or possession the noun ramas is therefore said to be in the possessive or genitive case the possessive answers the question whose whose computer ramas computer so ramas gives the possessive case the possessive case does not always denote possession it is used to denote authorship origin kind etc as shakespeare's place means the place written by shakespeare a mother's love means the love felt by a mother sir surendranath speech means the speech delivered by sir surendranath the court's decree means the decree passed by the court Wellington's victories means the victories gained by Wellington. Rama's temple means the temple dedicated to Rama. Solomon's temple means the temple built by Solomon. 
formation of the possessive case. When the noun is singular, the possessive case is formed by adding yes to the noun as the boy's book, the king's crown. You come to this point, there is an apostrophe. The boy's book means the book belongs to the boy. The king's crown means crown belongs to the king. Note, the letter yes is omitted. In a few words, where too many hissing sounds would come together for conscience sake. See, there is a single apostrophe. There is no yes after the apostrophe. For goodness sake, for justice sake, for Jesus sake, Moses loss. When the noun is plural and ends in yes, the possessive case is formed by adding only an apostrophe, there is no S after apostrophe. Boys, school. Girls, school. Horses, tails. When the noun is plural but does not end in S, the possessive sign is formed by adding S as men's club. Children's books. When a noun or a title consists of several words, the possessive sign is attached only to the lost word as the Nawab of Rampu's library. Here we have added yes to the word Rampu only, not Nawab. I saw it at Asquit and Lords. The lost word is Lord, so we have added here apostrophe and yes. When two nouns are in a position, the possessive sign is put to the letter only as that is Tagore. The poet's house. Here Tagore and the poet are the same. It indicates the same person. That's why we are adding apostrophe and yes to the lost word only. Also, when two nouns are closely connected, the possessive is put to the letter only. Huntley and Palmer's Biscuits, William and Mary's Reign. Each of two or more connected nouns implying separate position must take the possessive sign as Godiness and Green's Histories because these two nouns give two different things, Goldsmith's and Cooper's Poems. Goldsmith's poems as well as Cooper's poems. Use of the possessive case. Nouns denoting inanimate objects are seldom put in the genitive case or possessive case. Thus we do not say the house's roof we don't say. Then what should we say? The roof of the house. The garden's fruit wrong. The fruit of the garden correct. The cottage door wrong, the door of the cottage, because here cottage, garden, house, all these nouns are indicating inanimate things. For inanimate things, don't add yes after apostrophe. Relationship in such cases is indicated by the preposition of or the noun can sometimes be used as if it were an adjective. The flowers of summer, the summer flowers, the door of the cottage, the cottage door. Here you must note your point. The summer flower, not summer's flowers. Cottage door, not cottage's door. The possessive case was once used with any kind of noun, but it is now usually restricted to those shown below. Noun denoting person as Gopal's book. A man's hand. Noun denoting any kind of living thing other than man. A cat's tail. A horse's head. A bird's feathers. Noun denoting personified things as time. A day's journey. A month's holiday. Three weeks leave. A year's absence. In two hours time. Noun denoting personified things as space. A boot's length, a hair's breadth, a razor's edge, a stone's throw, 
a needle's point. All these five phrases indicate idioms. Noun denoting personified things as weight. A pound's weight, a ton's weight. Value. A shilling's worth, five pounds worth. Noun signifying certain dignified objects as earth's creatures. The soul's delight. Heaven's will. The law's delay. The mind's eye. The ocean's roar. Now declension of nouns. When we give an order, the various cases of a noun or pronoun in the two numbers, that is singular and plural, we are said to decline it or to give its declension. Thus the full declensions of the nouns girl and man are as follows. Now see, nominative case girl, girls, genitive case or possessive case, girls, girls, accusative case, girl, girls, nominative case, man, men, genitive case for man, mans and mens, accusative case for man is man and men only. Nominative of address, read the following sentence, come here, Akash, in the above sentence, Akos is the name of the person spoken to or addressed. We call its case the nominative of address or the vocative case. Other examples. Come on, girls. Here, girls. Come into the garden. Money. Here, money. Oh, death. Where is the sting? Death. Romans. Countrymen. Lend me your ears. Here Romans, countrymen, they are addressed. A noun used to name a person or thing addressed is in the vocative case. In these examples you have seen only vocative case. Now come to the next one, dative case. Compare, Devi gave a book. Devi gave Viji a book. In each of these sentences, the noun book is the object of gave. What did Devi give? Devi gave a book. In the second sentence, we are told that Viji was the person to whom Devi gave a book. Now you are going to find the minute difference between these two sentences. The noun Viji is called the indirect object. Then what is the direct object? Book is the direct object of the verb gave. And is said to be in the dative case. It will be noticed that the position of the indirect object is immediately after the verb. Ramu gave Viji a book. Sita gave Gopu a book. So as soon as the verb finishes, after the verb, the indirect object comes. And before the direct dative means of or belonging to giving. Because the verbs with which indirect objects are used may generally be classified as verbs of giving. Devi gave Viji a book. Devi gave a book to Viji. Will you do me a favor? Will you do a favor to me? I bought Devi a book. I bought a book for Devi. Fetch the boy a book. Fetch a book for the boy. Get me a taxi. Get a taxi for me. You see that the indirect object of your verb denotes the person to whom, that is more important, to whom something is given or for whom something is done. So, given and done indicate indirect object. Nouns in a position. Read the following sentences Ganguly, our captain made 100 runs. We see that Ganguly and our captain are one and the same person. The noun captain follows the noun Ganguly simply to explain which Ganguly is referred to. When one noun follows another to describe it, the noun which follows is said to be in a position placing near to the noun which comes before it. Here. Ganguly or Captain. Captain is in opposition to Ganguly. 
a noun in a position is in the same case as the noun which it explains. Nominative case means nominative case. Accusative case means accusative case. In the above sentence, the noun captain is in a position to the noun ganguly and is in the nominative case because ganguly is in the nominative case. As ganguly is in the nominative case, so captain is also in the nominative case. Kabir, the great reformer, was a weaver. The noun in a position is in the nominative case. That is, the great reformer, reformer, is in a position to Kabir. So, Kabir is in the nominative case. Therefore, the great reformer is also in the nominative case. Yesterday, I met your uncle, the doctor. The noun in a position is in the accusative case. Why? Have you seen Ganguly, the artist drawings? The noun in a position is in the genitive case. Why? Possessive case. Why? Because it is very near to Ganguly. Sporting models for nouns. The flock of sheep is eating grass in Peter's orchard. Now you are going to learn a very important lesson. How to separate each word and name in the grammar class? The flock of sheep is eating grass in Peter's orchard. Now we are taking one after the other words. The is the first word. What does the word the indicate? Definite article. Then the next word is flock. What all you can say in the grammar for flock in this sentence means first flock is a collective noun. Then it is in a singular number. Then it is neuter gender. It is nominative case because it is the subject of the sentence. Subject to the verb is eating. See the sentence again. The flock of sheep is eating. So is eating is the verb. And for this verb, what is the subject? Flock. The flock of sheep is eating grass in Peter's orchard. The same sentence repeated here. Of. The third word, preposition, having sheep for its object. The fourth word is sheep, common noun, plural number, common gender, accusative case. Take the verb is eating, verb, another thing also you can say, is eating, present continuous tense, grass, material noun, singular number, neuter gender, accusative case, object of the verb is eating. What does the flock of sheep eating? What is the flock of sheep eating? Or you can say, what does the flock of sheep eat? The answer is you are getting grass. So grass is the object of the verb is eating in this sentence. In preposition having orchard for its object. Peter's proper noun because Peter is particularly for a person is used. Singular number, masculine gender, genitive case. Orchard, the last word of the sentence. Common noun, singular number, neutral gender. Accusative case like this, if each word of a sentence is separated and given some grammar point, then it is called parsing. We say parsing of the models or parsing of the sentence.